I'm starting with Turoni. Now this is a sweet Italian style nougat. This candy is a great place to get a handle on Italian meringue. Before you start making your meringue, you have to get all your ingredients ready. I've got two cups of toasted almonds, and I'll just add this to a bowl, along with my other flavoring ingredients. For an added pop of color, a cup of shelled pistachios. I love how citrus plays into Italian confections. A Little bit of orange zest works well. You could also use lemon zest if you want, about two teaspoons. And just a teaspoon of vanilla. And I'll just set this aside. Something else I wanna get ready is a little dish with cornstarch. And that's for my hands, so that they don't stick to the taroni when I'm pressing it into the pan. As I'm whipping the whites, I'll gradually add a quarter cup of sugar. Now I'm only whipping them to a soft peak. Now that the egg whites are whipped, it's time to move on to cooking the sugar. And this is the essence of an Italian meringue. A common meringue is simply egg whites with sugar, what I just made here. A Swiss meringue is warmed egg whites with sugar, but an Italian meringue, you cook the sugar and pour it into the whites. I start with two cups of sugar and also two cups of honey. I've got this on high heat and I wanna cook this all the way to 280 degrees Fahrenheit. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna stir constantly. And it's because of the honey. It can boil over if you're not stirring it. I'm just gonna get this melted, and then I'd like to switch to a wooden spoon. Yeah, that feels better. Between when you start and when you hit 280, you wanna make sure you keep stirring. But after 280, believe it or not, it's not a concern. Now that I've crossed 280, I just simply cook it, still on high, without stirring, all the way to 315. There we go. Before I add it to my egg whites, I'm gonna need to cool it down to 300. I've dropped to just below 300 degrees, so it's time to add it. You want to have the mixer on high speed when you're adding the hot syrup. To pour your hot sugar syrup safely into your egg whites while whipping them, actually pour it down the side of the bowl. It'll bypass the beaters altogether, go to the bottom without splashing a single drop. I'm letting the meringue mix for about four minutes. It's cooling, and you can also hear by the motor that it's starting to thicken up. So I'm just going by touch at this point. When I feel the outside of the bowl is a bit cooler, then I know it's cool enough for me to handle. There we go. Look at how thick and luscious that is. That is textbook Italian meringue. Now you want to work quickly at this point. Gorgeous. I've got a nine by 13 pan already greased and lined with parchment. And in goes the Taroni. Oh, right now, all I can smell is that luscious honey. Spread this using my spatula. And then by now it's cool that I can actually use my hands. This is where the cornstarch comes in. A little cornstarch means I can just pat it in place, making it perfectly flat. You want to give your taroni plenty of time to set, a good three hours, and then it's ready to slice. I have a pan that I've allowed to set fully, but it's still got a chew to it. You're probably picking up that the taroni is a little bit sticky. So how do you keep your knife from sticking when you wanna slice it? An easy little tip is to actually just Put a little vegetable oil on a paper towel and just wipe the blade of your knife. And that just eases it right through the taroni. But you've got these beautiful pieces with the almonds and the pistachios in there. 
and really it's all about that honey flavor. But you wouldn't get this set and structure without an Italian meringue.